The Iraq Museum collection consists of findings from archaeological excavation conducted since the beginning of the 20th century. To the findings from the archaeological excavation, we must add the collection of Islamic findings previously exhibited since the 30s at the Abbasid Palace and at the Khan Mirjan of Baghdad. This makes the Museum of Baghdad a place unique in the world with an uninterrupted documentary repertoire on the heart and archaeology of Mesopotamia, spanning from the earliest stage of the humankind to the Ottoman period. Due to its wide variety and richness, the Iraq Museum represents a fundamental cultural and social reference for the history of humanity, just like the great museum that had collection on the ancient Near East, such as the British Museum in London, the Louvre in Paris, the Border Asiatic Museum in Berlin, and some American museums. Among the collection of particular significance, we may mention the ones witnessing some fundamental historical periods that are represented in a unique way in the Baghdad Museum. The prehistory and proto-history of Iraq, the Sumerian period, the first half of the second millennium, Babylonian and Kassite civilization, the Neo-Syrian period, the Hellenistic, Parthian and Sasanian periods, and finally, the Abbasid and Islamic dynasties of Iraq. The general layout of the Iraq Museum collection, still partially present, was established by Dr. Farj Basmachi in 1968 according to a chronological criterion. The museum rooms are therefore arranged, starting from the first floor and then down to the ground floor, from the most ancient period, prehistory, up to the Islamic and Ottoman heroes. Inside of the rooms, then, a further division is often obtained by grouping the objects according to the materials they are made of. Stone sculptures, pottery, metals, tablets, seals, etc. etc. This criterion is quite clear and effective for the visitor who is faced with large groups of similar objects that can be easily compared with each other. This criterion, however, has the disadvantage of not offering the original context of finding or the use of the object according to the new lines of modern museums. The museum itinerary, chronologically ordered, begins on the first floor where the first culture of Mesopotamia are put on display. The oldest artifacts come from the northern area of the country, as the skull of the Neanderthal man from Shanidar. The Neolithic period sees the rise of settled villages and a flourishing ceramic production, but also the spread of a rich production of zoomorphic and anthropomorphic terracottas and figurines realized by the so-called Asuna, Samara and Halaf cultures, 8th, 6th millennium BCE. From the end of the 6th millennium, the south of Mesopotamia appears and becomes extremely alive with the spread of the so-called El Hubeid culture throughout the area between the two rivers and beyond. The prehistory rooms led into one of the most important spaces of the museum, the gallery displaying the cultural and artistic achievements of the Sumerian era. The birth of the city, the invention of writing, the birth of the state, the first dynasty and the appearance of a production that we can now certainly define artistic. The Sumerian room, which sets for the period from about 3600 BC down to the end of the third dynasty of Ur, the end of the third millennium BC, collects some of the masterpieces of Mesopotamian art such as the cult vase and the female head from Warka, the statuary collection of the early dynastic period, and some of the treasures of the royal tombs of Ur. Then we move to another great gallery that collects artifacts of the different Semitic cultures, 
from the glorious Akkadian dynasty, 3rd millennium BCE, to the dynasty of Isin and Lhasa and the Babylon of Amurabi in the 2nd millennium, the subsequent Kassite period, second half of the second millennium BCE, is represented by a series of uh, kuduru and the decorated facade of the Karandash temple in Uruk, reconstructed on the ground floor of the museum, at the entrance of the two great galleries dedicated to the later Assyrian Empire. These last two galleries have recently been rearranged and requalified thanks to an Italian project that has added further pieces to the exhibition. The first gallery exhibits some artifacts from the Middle Assyrian era, second half of the second millennium, together with the findings from the Neo Assyrian capital Nimrud, while the Great Assyrian Gallery, perhaps the most monumental room of the entire museum, display the war reliefs from the royal palace of Sargon II at Khorsabad. A further room is dedicated to the precious ivories found mainly in Nimrud, discovered by the British and Iraqi expedition. Now, we move on the room dedicated to the Neo-Babylonian period, with findings from the major centers of the Neo-Babylonian Empire in the 6th century BC, and part of the glazed brick decoration of the Ishtar Gate at Babylon. The late periods, those of the Seleucid, Parthian and Sasanian domination, occupies an important wing of the museum, with three rooms dedicated mainly to the findings from the caravan city of Atra, with an exceptional sculpture and statuary production, and to the rich figurative culture of Seleucia on the Tigris. The last three galleries of the museum are dedicated to the heart and culture of Islam that rose after the Battle of Cadicea. Here, there are exhibited architectural remains from buildings no longer existing, together with a large series of minor artistic objects. Recently, a new space has been added to these galleries, thanks to an Italian project, the reconstruction of the Mirjania Musalla, the prayer room of the Madrasa Mirjania. Thank you.